Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, well, let's go over the market. The week has finally finished. A pretty uh, pretty spicy week to say the least. Let's just say that. And um, yeah, let's just talk about it, see what happened. I have to check the date for a second. I thought it was Thursday. I'm like getting my dates mixed up. Anyways, the week is uh, is done, I'm confirming that. But hey, let's talk about it, guys. So ending the day off at 195, pretty much $196, which is an increase of 2.75% compared to the SPY, a nice outperformance compared to the NASDAQ, pretty much in line, I would say, give or take. Um, so that's, you know, not too bad. That's not really performing well just off of itself, it feels like. It's just performing relative to the market, which, you know, whatever. At this point, I think we'll take anything we can get. Let's be honest here, right? But let's talk about it. What does this mean? Are we finally in the bottom? Are we finally ready to run? You know to all-time highs or something like that let's just say right let's discuss all that if you guys enjoy don't forget to hit that like button again none of this is financial advice make your own decisions do your own research all that stuff but let's get this party started so tesla on pretty decent volume today i mean the past like six days or six bars have been pretty high volume especially the past four bars have been extremely high volume and you know we're also getting the very high volume on the green days as well which is a good sign in my opinion as well so that's not too bad whatsoever so the most important thing that I instantly notice once I see this daily candle close is the fact that we did close. Uh, unfortunately, so there's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is the fact that we pretty much came very close to this gap fill at 197. And, you know, we essentially got rejected uh, more or less at it, right? Not exactly at it, but close enough. So that's the bad sign. The good sign is the fact that we did close above this 195 level, which you can see two times we've had a rejection at and essentially a support at right here, more or less. So we did close above this level that these two candles couldn't and essentially got rejected at. So that's a good sign. We are essentially starting to, you know, close at higher levels than we previously were able to and whatnot. So that's, you know, a sign of strength. Now, my only concern is the fact that this doesn't end up just being a bear flag. I personally don't think it will be a bear flag, mainly because, you know, you can't just have bear flags all the way down to zero. So, I mean, you could, I guess, but usually it doesn't happen like that, right? So technically, the, the one fear I would say is that this ends up being a bear flag, I guess, similar to this, what this ended up being, right? Because this essentially was a bear flag, right? And then we kind of fall down again and maybe make another bear flag and then fall again to 150. That's still technically a possibility. We need to see how this structure forms. But that's something just to kind of consider in the back of your mind for now. But overall, what I'm looking at is the fact that, you know, it's not a bad close. It's a fairly bullish close, a nice, fairly decent looking bullish green candle, which is a good sign. The RSI, unfortunately, is not crossing over the median. We definitely want to get a little bit more, you know, uh, momentum into next week, let's say Monday, which I wouldn't be surprised if we do, mainly because, uh, you know, like I said, Fridays and Mondays tend to rhyme. Not always, but, you know, maybe seven out of ten times, right? So that's something else to consider. Taking a look at the major uh, things that we care about, we have the email still at uh, the 20, uh, 21 email still over at $212. So wouldn't surprise me if we actually potentially get a rally up to that at some point soon-ish. Uh, the Bollinger Band, we're still pretty much bouncing off of the very bottom part, which also lines up with around that 212, which I also wouldn't be surprised to eventually make our way there the 50 and the 200 are still well above us and we are now officially above the five but the 10 is still sitting uh, at about 205 204 so this is a good first step in the right direction right so ultimately like i said yesterday right if you look at it on the smaller time frame you know we essentially more or less are potentially looking to play out this inverted head and shoulders on a much much smaller time frame right of course uh this being the left shoulder whoa that's not what i want at all this of course being the left shoulder the head and this of course more or less being the right shoulder with a potential uh neckline being you can either argue that the neckline is pretty much this 195 level that we did close above which is a good sign now i want to see follow through or you could also make the argument that the neckline was something along the lines of this as well which is also pretty plausible right regardless we are closing above both of the levels as of right now so as long as we get some follow through in the next week that is going to be a good sign for this shorter or rather smaller time frame head and shoulders inverted head and shoulders which is the bullish version uh, pattern however if you move over to a slightly longer time frame you can see right ever since we started this overall descent we could potentially like i said yesterday i think it was yesterday be setting up let's do it in four hours a bit easier we could be potentially setting up a massive inverted head and shoulders right so the one thing to pay attention to here is we fell we created this low here then we fell over here this could be the head and again we could potentially create the right shoulder here so this could be something that i wouldn't be you know too completely surprised if we maybe go up here come back down and then break above something like that right just as a rough example that could play out as well right so that's kind of like the bullish scenario and that's like the you know if you're a bull that's what you want to see essentially in my honest uh in my honest opinion, I guess, right? That's what I'm personally looking for and I'm hoping for. It doesn't mean it'll play out. That is just a purely a 
uh, projection or just a guess, right? That's just they take a wild guess. Could, could not, but that's something that would not be too surprising nor a bad thing whatsoever. But the most important level in this whole kind of congestion area over here that we've been trading in for a while now being pretty much around 230 um, a, a level, right? Now, the most important level I'm personally looking at for the you know very, very short term, pretty much essentially maybe even Monday, Tuesday, something like that, early next week, is not only do I want to be breaking above this gap fill at 196, but even more importantly than that, in my opinion, I really want to see this 200 to 204 level broken. I want to see us go above it and start closing candles above it. This to me is going to be an extremely important level. Now, I think personally, if we can get above this kind of 200 to 204 level, I wouldn't be surprised if we potentially come up to around, you know, at the very least 212 to where the Bollinger Band was, right? Minimum, right? And then potentially meet the green line all the way up around 230 once again as it slowly comes down to meet us uh, as we start making our way up there. And then potentially hopefully play out that inverted head and shoulders. That's the bullish scenario. Now, unfortunately, there of course, as usual, is a bearish scenario, right? So for instance, it's easier to see on the weekly, there is still uh, just a head and shoulders, right? Uh, a bearish head and shoulders being potentially playing out or I guess maybe wants to play out right, being something like this, we can say. So that's something else that you definitely want to be paying attention to, because if this plays out, it can get quite ugly. Now, the most important levels for this to play out, in my opinion, is essentially a weekly closure anywhere, I would say, in the 180s is already getting a little spooky, but anything, especially on the weekly, a closure candle under 180, is where things get extremely scary let's just say right so the fact that we came down under 180 and you can see a lot of buying pressure came in that to me is a good sign that to me is a very very good sign and that's essentially what we wanted to see and you can see on the weekly we have the red line that you know is over here that we bounced off of once twice three four and now a fifth time as well which is overall ending up as a potential massive support now if you're a bull you can also argue the fact that we are in a potentially a massive bull flag right so you can count one of these two red lines I would personally count this one a little bit more so just for the bull flag because it lines up more uh it just kind of makes sense with the bottom line as well it's kind of more perpendicular to each other or like or symmetrical i don't know what the word is but they're essentially the same line almost um but the point is, is the fact that that to me could potentially be a bull flag with a one two three four five six a potential seven breakout touch point right that is a possibility and this being potentially the bottom that is in my opinion a very real possibility is it actually the you know the case here hard to say for sure as of, as of right at this very moment however another thing to pay attention to is the fact that we did close a weekly candle a little bit lower than before as you can see compared to this weekly candle over here on october 22nd but the rsi is actually a little bit higher on the weekly even though the stock technically did go a little bit lower in terms of closure on this current weekly time frame right you can compare these two closures right here this massive red candle and this one right here right close lower however the rsi not you know completely crazy higher but it is still nonetheless a higher low so that's not a bad sign as well similar to over here when we can you know more obviously fell lower but the rsi essentially making a double bottom pretty much stopping at the exact same level with like a minuscule lower low but like at that point it's so minuscule that you can argue that it's a double bottom right um, so that's something else to consider as well. But ultimately, guys, that's kind of what I'm seeing at the very moment. Very nice recovery so far. It is the recovery that we did want to see. We just want to see some actual follow through. I personally, again, I'm holding everything. The only thing I've sold was, like I said yesterday, I sold uh, those 100 shares uh, just for... Uh, de-risking essentially but i'm still holding everything else that i have and uh i'm using that money that i got back from the 100 shares that i sold just as a potential you know de-risk for if we go lower somehow if we do cool i'll buy and i'll have you know the spare cash like i mentioned before and on top of that if we do pump i also want to make sure i am ready to potentially hedge against this market so say, speaking of the market the spy you can see i think my price target right now is going to be around 410 which is going to be the ultimate red line the top channel of the red line uh, as a test right so that's kind of what i'm personally waiting for at the very moment which again is around 410 give or take right so that's kind of what i'm expecting there and we'll see what happens on top of that the vix you can see is definitely showing some serious weakness over here it did do this before right it did the same thing before and then kind of went right back into this channel and broke out however it is showing the same weakness as showed over here so you know we'll see what that kind of turns out into guys we'll see but another thing to pay attention to on the vix is the fact that the stock or i guess it's not a stock but the vix essentially uh did not make a lower low compared to this level but the rsi did 
that's also a bearish diversion. So I don't know, man. Things are looking pretty good for the bulls, but I don't want to count my eggs before they're hatched, right? Because this market can, you know, flip us extremely quickly and it can just completely turn around back to the downside just at a snap of a finger, it feels like, right? All it takes is just some, something to happen, some major news, and we're back down to the lows. So just, you know, keep... Keep, be, be on your toes, I guess, is the most important thing. Don't, in my opinion, not financial advice again. But don't over risk yourself. Don't, you know, leverage yourself. Don't go in margin. It's just stupid, guys. People will get wiped out. Imagine being the person that sold somewhere near the bottom in this 178 range uh, on Tesla two days ago and then now watching it skyrocket. Uh, let's let's see how far we actually went up from that absolute bottom. If you sold, let's say, at 177 and then you're looking at it right now, you just missed 10% just because you panic sold, right? And that's and this is this was the day where I made that video where I talked about don't let your emotions take control. This is exactly why, right? If you panic sold and you let your emotions take control because you're like, oh my God, I'll close below 180, it's over, it's over, no, right? And then you panic sold because you're like, that's it, it's over, man, we're going down to 150, it's guaranteed. And then we skyrocket 10%. Well, now you just completely fucked up, right? So that's just something to consider. Anyway, all that being said and done, guys, I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. That's what I'm currently seeing. That's what I'm expecting for the next, you know, potential early next week and whatnot. Hopefully it's informative. Hopefully it helps. And yeah, I think tomorrow or rather next week should be a pretty interesting week as usual. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Peace.